Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our big dreams garden. Let's walk up to the end of the deck. It's January now, it's winter time, so lots of things are sleeping. But it's got bits of green in, and that's by design. I wanted to have a, a few seasons in this garden. Whew. I knew since 2006 that I wanted a Japanese garden somewhere, but never had the, the opportunity to do it. I had, at some point, uh, a rented flat, and I made a small, tiny little garden on the roof of the porch until the landlord found out, and I had to take it down. I honestly never thought I'd get a garden this big, it's 100 square meters. I thought I'd have a small garden. So it gave us the opportunity to do lots of things. <clears throat> and we love Japanese gardens, um, me and Jake. I, I got him introduced to Japan, I mean, he's Chinese, so there's a bit of, there was a bit of tension originally until he actually went to Japan and met the Japanese people, so the architecture and found them all friendly because China and Japan in the past have not got on. So th there was a journey already underway. Now, this bit I'm standing in here, this flooded very severely over the, uh, the winter. We first moved in in October, so from December to February, this was a stinky clay quagmire. It was had standing water a couple of inches deep and extended for most of the garden. So we were concerned about the drainage back then. We didn't know what we were letting ourselves in for. Uh, I was going to start on this garden sort of April, May time. I saw a tweet from Monty about they wanted new people for Big Dream series. And I was watching that, the, the previous series one and two, getting inspiration, writing down tips. I was, I was sitting in there actually, writing down tips, watching on, on iPlayer in the morning. And I applied, and I, I, I wrote a load of stuff about what we wanted to do. The fact that Jake has a twin brother who lives in a twin house next door. You know, that little hook to get you in. Uh, I dropped some plans, uh, some ideas, and some photos of Japan, and they rang me back the next day and said, yes, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you on the phone, see what you like, and then we'll send someone down with a camera to come and interview you. So we actually did the first interview on the deck here. So Toby, who was uh, actually the assistant producer, I think that's right, sorry Toby if that's wrong, the assistant producer was here with his camera, and we had chairs set up over here, and we're sitting down, and he was asking us questions. And then they went away and then came back a week or so later and said, yes, let's do it. You're in. So we had to sign NDAs and things like that, non-discoves, disclosures. It also meant everything had to start. I had to draw up plans. I've got some, some of the plans here. And figure out budgets. Now, <laughs> when we originally interviewed with Toby, I, I thought, 2,000 pounds, that should be enough for plants. And you know what? Our plant budget was about two and a half thousand, maybe three thousand by the end of it, so not, not too far off. So sitting here, I, I, I never like this deck. I think it's too big. It's huge. And what would you do on it? Maybe a dining set, maybe some chairs and things. Jay wanted to keep it. And that's, that's one thing about doing a garden with someone. It's uh, a joint process. Which, for better or worse, is um, how it is. <laughs> so the deck has stayed. I wanted to cut it in half, actually, because it is it's vast. But the deck was staying. And Jake wanted a dining area, a separate dining area. So the place, best place I thought for it would be over here, because I knew down this way, we were here over winter. I don't know whether you can see it. It's the mill, Barthampton Mill poke through there. Uh, uh, I can't really see on the monitor. Up there. So when all these trees have died down over winter, it was very fortunate us being here over winter, we could see through to there. And you can see the lights at night, which is very nice. So that bit was designed first. And then all this was informed by the trees that used to be here until they got cut down to make this. So it was a borrowed landscape. So that was part of the idea for that way. And we, I knew I wanted a lantern somewhere, so the natural place was right in the corner. And then because we're having the dining thing here, I was to expand it. And I'd seen a video on YouTube for this cement sort of concrete paving here. 
which comes in a little former. You have a, a little 45 by 45 centimeters former, and you put the concrete or cement in and, and smooth it in. It was horribly hard work, and I'm not entirely happy with it. It's, it's wonky, which is yeah, yeah, all right, but if you're coming in and out with chairs, less so. In fact, the um, the tables and chairs we were going to get were smaller than that, so there's going to be more room around the outside, but they'd sold out and weren't shipping any more from China. Thanks, China. <laughs> so, we're going to have a lot of paving just to link this to the deck. And then I wasn't sure what to do out here, so more paving. Crazed paving. I said it on the show. <laughs> Monty called it crazed paving. We did a whole piece in there on it. He wasn't sure about that. And then have the lantern right in the corner. He wasn't sure about that because lanterns should be next to things to light rather than just a destination. So that has moved. I was going to the magnolia. This is the magnolia down here. That was going to go into the corner. But we found a cherry tree. So we swapped that out. So it's all changed a little bit. And where the maple was, the mound, was going to carry on around to the back. So we're going to have uh, two rooms effectively, one here and one over there. <clears throat> now, Monty came. We looked at the plans and then he stepped out here like this. And it's not really shown, it's not shown in the program at all. He's just taking it all in. He achieves a moment of zen, a gardening zen almost. He walks in, he's taking everything in, there's a quietness on the outside, but you know there's an aura. He's looking at everything and looking into the distance. Not really looking so much at the space itself. And what he did is he went over to the corners like this, or to the sides rather. I was just looking, there's a old mill up that way. He liked that. And then he walked down here, because I've got to get around the chairs and tables. This is all soggy grass, and then he was up against here and looking up at the house. Because one thing we hadn't considered, one thing I hadn't considered, were the views from the garden. For me, the view was always into the garden. I was having my coffee in the morning. I was looking this way, and there was a new build which is behind there, and he's going, hmm, yeah, I don't like that. So I was considering all the views looking in, but not here and looking that way or looking this way and that came up again when we went to St Morgan the Japanese garden there's a, a mound in the middle and you're just looking through and seeing all the different viewpoints through the mound so Monty came through and um, actually he was coming down here because he'd seen the plan and he goes I want to walk through here and that changed the garden this became a journey and because this was a journey <laughs> we had to have a destination and Jake came up with this I had an idea to put a shed, uh, shed a bench down that way but he wanted it painted like a Japanese gate this red is vermilion almost and it's black and it changed the whole feeling of this end of the garden and it's brilliant and I love it we did film a whole piece on it where we were talking about how if you were a European you'd never have this sort of colour in your garden. But if you're Asian, if you're Chinese, if you're Japanese, that would absolutely be right. And it is, and it's brilliant. And because we've got this journey through here now, this lantern has moved closer. You see it's starting to go green. We've been experimenting, we've been experimenting with um yogurt and moss blended up yeah, some some you know success so I was talking just a minute ago about views this bench is very wet so I'm not going to sit in it what I wanted was to make the, the maple which is obviously not in leaf at the moment look bigger than it is so I planted tiny little um, pines and things and junipers down the bottom we're gonna see how that goes on um, um, I was going to have flowers down here, so you were sitting here in amongst the flowers, but it's not seemed right, it's not seemed right. I put some in, took them out. Uh, what else have we got in this corner? 
pines. This is really shallow soil here, it might not look it. But underneath here is a drain inspection cover hidden away. I put this maple here and I said it wasn't going to be any good and it's not. It's, uh, it's a ready brown so it disappears against the fence so that one's going to be moving later in the year. But I like what he did with these pines. And everything is kind of evergreen in the corner and it leads the eye in. It's um, really good. The gravel was a bit of an afterthought. I didn't want to have gravel because as you can see it just gets everywhere. But you know what? With that bench it looks great. This bamboo here, I actually found it by the side of the road uh, about four or five years ago. It was out of a pot near my old house, just lying there. Stuck a new pot, new uh, soil, new compost, watered it. It was fine. It was brilliant. So we're on our journey now. I wanted to get back up to the deck. Now originally, I was going to have stones through this path but that was proving difficult i was going to make it of this concrete stuff again but that was so hard and so time consuming we scrapped that and what we did we got reclaimed pennant stone from a uh, depot down that way designed this pattern up because there were two two sizes and got our builder to cut it and shape it and you see it's pretty cool because it's got a fossil fan in here It's hard to believe that underneath here is, <laughs> it's a, well, it's taller than me. It's about that, that big. And from about here, all the way to here, sort of back to the lantern, is a big plastic, almost like an underwater swimming pool. And that takes the water, because we're on the bottom of the slope, takes the water from the houses and the road and puts it into the soak away. So that fills up gradually, spills into the drain and goes away. That was a lot of work and it was a lot of headache because we had to work to the TV schedule and it took six weeks off that. We did the whole garden in four months so you can see that was a huge amount and it was also a huge worry because we didn't have control over it. The developer who commissioned these houses was having a bit of a, a to-do with the people who built them. So there were sort of legal wrangles and insurance things Fortunately, the people doing next door, uh, Robbie, the builder, and his um, building friend, came and gave us a hand. They took the fence off, brought in the big diggers, scooped it down as far as it would go, and then helped to build everything up. So the developer picked up the bill for that, for which we are grateful. So underneath there, loads of water. The maple itself was a gift from my ex-flatmate, Gav. Thank you, Gav. I used to live outside where where I used to live. So that was the first big plant. Actually, you know, I was talking earlier about my first garden was a little thing on a roof. Part of it was this snake's beard, which I've kept ever since. So that's about 10 years old. And that's pretty much bulletproof. It was drying out, it was waterlogged. So it's nice to have that back here. This bamboo was on special at the local supermarket. I'm not usually a, a one for buying plants at supermarkets, but it was on special and I needed a screen. I wanted a screen. I'm not sure it works yet, um, but we're going to see how it beds in this year. And I'm going to move a few things around the pier as it's coming over the other side. This cherry I talked about earlier, it's got a cone cloa around the bottom. It's died back over winter, but that's big and bushy, so it forms like a, a big greeny yellow collar around this. So I'm looking forward to seeing that come out this year. It's a bit squishy down here. Um, the climbers are obviously all died back. That was a Monty's suggestion, put something on this part of the garden. I'm going to see how that grows. Um, what else have we got? Hebes down here. These ones looking very sorry for themselves. It was very wet at one point, and I think that's what's done these ones in. But these globe ones, doing all right. I think I will move these though to the mound. I want to simplify things. That's a, we got a load of plants in, a lot of plants. And Monty said to himself, he said, you either get a few in and then wait for them to grow, or you get loads in and then sort of subtract them. So I've got all sorts. Dogwoods are just like dogwoods because they're pretty. Uh, the magnolia, the star magnolia, did brilliantly last year in a pot, as did this willow, this Kilmarnock willow. Um. <laughs> This grass, we 
wasn't planned. It's because it's called penistium, but it looks a bit like penistium. And it, it was in um, a display with another plant whose latin name was sort of testicular testacium or something like that so it's like cock and balls so there's a bit of a joke here i'm gonna have to find that other plant and stick it underneath but actually it's been brilliant it just everyone just comes and touches it it's it's gone over now way over and he's cutting back later in the spring but this became a divider between heading back up to the kitchen or heading down our gateway this is another plant that I saw in a garden centre and thought, I have to have that, it's so weird. So this is Cryptomeria japonica, and look at the colours. It's just fantastic. All year round it's very interesting. So we've got a dwarf one somewhere over there. This was my weird leaf area. So we've got sort of Nandinias and flocks and I can't remember what that is it's on the plans so that was a thing I learned very early on is write everything down on your plan which one's which and then coming up to here the Zen garden there's a story about this so no man's land that's what it was I'd drawn up the plans <sighs> And I'd come to a bit of a blank here as a drain cover. And it's called No Man's Land because I wasn't sure what I wanted to put in here. And I didn't want to just add something for the sake of adding something. I wanted to leave it blank and see what Monty thought of it, if he had any ideas. So he's looking at this. I mean, we're going to have water down here. And he goes, and he looks at the aerial view, and he, says, he sees the gate, and he sees a bit of a line here, and he says, you know what, I think you might have a third garden. <laughs> and he, he went away, and it was about 10 o'clock at night, and Jake and I were standing in the rain, and we were actually walking this path that he'd created around the back, and really enjoying it. And got down to here and then walked up and then Jake was up on the deck and I was down here and almost at the same time we looked at each other and said we should get a zen garden and that was it we both knew we had to have a zen garden here and it fitted so perfectly so <laughs> it's crazy looking back on it now um, it does look good on this camera so I had to research that and how we do it. So we've got two drain covers underneath here. One for the original drain, which goes down that way. And there's another one for the soak away, which goes under here. So we had to dig out a lot of clay soil ourselves. The excavator stopped sort of at, at that point. We dug down. Um, I dug down. <laughs> I think Jake was doing other things. Dug down, cleared out the soil, um, got rid of it. The guys are very nice, got rid of it and then put down landscape fabric. In fact, there's loads of landscape fabric under here to stop roots going into the soak away. We also stop the weeds coming up. There's a lot of bindweed we took out of here. Unfortunately, it hasn't come back. And then we've got three tons of gravel, which we ordered from uh, Cornish Lime. So it's nice Cornish gravel. Um, and part of it was because I'm from Devon and you know, Cornwall are neighbors. And also part of it because we went to see the Zen garden at the Japanese garden near St. Morgan. So there's that connection there. Unusually for a Zen garden, you walk through it. And I, I didn't want to have paving stones, paving slabs. Originally, we tried it with this stuff, this pennant here. And it didn't work. In fact, we had Monty here when we were doing that. And there's a whole bit which was um, not shown on the, on the TV show of us placing these stones and we spent quite some time. So Monty was standing up here and um, Jake and me and mum were down here moving things around, seeing what they thought. Interestingly, Monty was not perhaps looking at the stones themselves, but the space in between. And 
something that interests him is the space between things. Now, we've got this um, stuff from a reclamation yard. It's called Cotswold Crystal. I can jump in the Zen Garden because it's mine. And it's, um, you can see why we chose it. It's got bits of moss in here. It's got some quartz crystals in here. It's local, it's reclaimed, so that's all very good and, and Japanese. And I decided I didn't like the original paving stones, so I went out and bought these granite ones from, uh, I think it was Rhino Rock. So I set these in, and they kind of blend in, especially when it's wet. And then we've got a rake, Jake bought a rake, which lives up in the roof here. And that's something that we, we got from the Japanese garden. So thanks Robert for that tip. This gateway I'm incredibly proud of. Um, because I designed it. I designed it based on um, what you call now hit and miss. So you've got a plank here and a plank behind. So it louvers and lets some air in and some light in so you can see through the garden. And I gave that to our builder, uh, Paul to put together. And then we got some reclaimed slates, again from Walk Up Reclamation. And he created this amazing roof for us. And I love it. And when it's raining, you can stand in here and enjoy the rain in the pond. So, this is one of my favorite things. It looks Japanese. It gives us a view back through that way. Excuse the scruffy stuff. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then when you're up here, it gives you a view through to the lantern. So I love that. And this pit has changed a lot. Well, well, you know, a fair bit. You can see by the extreme pruning, this used to be a lot more shady. These are lime trees. And it was very dark here. So the shade garden by the side of the house wasn't going to get much sun anyway. Extra shading from the trees. And I love woodlands and I love ferns and green stuff like that. So that's what I wanted, lush and green. Perhaps not so lush and green at the moment because these are the uh, evergreen ferns. And there's some wasabi down here. I'm not seeing wasabi. Oh, uh, it's just going to flower soon. Tell you what, if you get the flowers, tempura batter, fry them. Delicious. You can eat all parts of this. So you can eat the leaves and also the fiery roots. Slugs like them too. So this is um, loads of hostas which are asleep. Lots of deciduous ferns. There's um, the Japanese metallic ferns in here too. Um, fancy japonica, which I'm not so keen on, but I wanted something fast growing just to enclose this. We've got an ugly gas box, which I ran out of time to enclose. We have the drain from the kitchen, for which I created this wooden box, which I'm, I was very pleased with. I hadn't done any woodworking since school, since I was about 12 years old. You know, it's a bit rough at the back, but it goes quite well. We had a tap put in, which Monty suggested, and he was absolutely right, obviously. Um, and there's a heck of a slope up here. And there are also pipes, hidden pipes under here from the old pub, and um, this is an old pub garden. So the pipes going all the way down there, so we had to excavate them out. Um, we also did one of the drainage, well, a couple of the drainage tests up here. We did six different test pits. So up here wasn't too bad. It's compacted in some places. It's new soil in some places with gravel bed underneath. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so digging this out wasn't too bad. And, these boulders were inspired by a drain, a, a, a pond thing that I'd seen um, in Tokyo. And Jake, <laughs> he originally wanted a stream. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to do a stream, I don't want to put an electric pump in. So I thought we'd have three separate ponds on a slope, so they have to be like this, because you, you'd be digging down so far deep down that way, and we'd already hit pipes, so that's why they're staggered ponds. The only problem with it uh, without having a pump though is mosquitoes because it's um, still water and it's quite shady the mosquitoes come and lay their eggs and they swim around and they come out so I think I might be putting a pump in anyway 
or at least running water, and it's something that Monty suggested, but it didn't make it to the final cut. I'm debating whether or not to get rid of this third one, just to have more room up here, more plants. It's very loosely based on Lake Biwa, the shape, which is near Mount Fuji, which we'd been to visit. Again, that was cut from the program. There's a whole thing on this side garden. We had Monty crawling over the front to try and get our plants out and place them. So we have a mixture of evergreens and deciduous. And then we have the drier loving ferns at the top and the spleniums and things like that. And as we go further down, we have the ferns that prefer moister conditions because the water's gonna run down this way. So that was a, a very good tip. We'd place them all in pots to see what they look like. And it takes a lot of plants. It took many hundreds of pounds worth of plants. And these ferns are about eight, nine quid each. And I've actually got some more to put in. And underneath here, it bark chippings, because I wanted that sort of springy woodland feel to it. That's it. This is um, a bit more relaxed. This is less designed other than just having this this um, pond here. Uh, the noise in the background are the dogs. Next to us, dogs. There's Meg and Archie. Or it could be the Alsatians that way. Anyway, ferns. I've been to the garden centre today and it's here's a good tip for you. If you've got big spaces in your garden in winter, go to the garden centre, see what's actually green because then you know it's going to be good for the winter, evergreen, and then you can use those to fill the holes. Now, the bike shed. The tea house bike shed. I keep my bikes out the front, and they're very well padlocked up. Jake doesn't like them. He thinks they're unsightly. So, he said, I've got to put them down here in the garden. So this area was going to be the bike shed. And indeed, on the plans, I'd put bike tool store space and some steps down. I didn't want steps down. Originally, I just wanted it enclosed. And Jake said, well, you're not going to bring soil through the house, which is fair enough. So we had some steps put in. And this was about £3,000 worth, all this stuff. Because it was just a, a wall there. So we had to have... Um, it was going to be a flat wall here, but there's a gas, a gas pipe under here. So for building regs, you have to leave that accessible. Hence, we've got an arch. And I do like our steps. You know, now it's obviously a good idea. Um, I can get in and out. Very nice. In fact, I <laughs> hear the dog shouting. This fence was designed so I could get my mountain bike in and out because I've got very wide handles and stick it in the bike store. But Jake said he doesn't want a bike store. Once we started doing the garden, he said it's too nice. I don't want a bike store here. And the tea garden idea, uh, the, the tea house, that was Monty's. <laughs> and I thought it was a little crazy. Uh, he gets at us for being crazy with our crazy paving. Having a mock tea house, a little bit crazy. Fun, but crazy. So for the program, I just made a bench. I made a copy of Jake's red bench, but painted it in the same color as the fence. And indeed, all the fences are this color because Japanese gardens are dark and they have dark fence fences. This is um, a rich oak, it's called. It's not a creosote, it's an actual fence stain. Uh, it just took one coat, and that was deliberate. We wanted it to look weathered. We didn't want to overpaint it and make it look brand new. The deliberate weathering. So what are this corner? Well, um, I've been to the garden center today, so we've got peat-free compost. Monty's very big on his peat-free, and rightly so, so that's peat-free. Um, it's all conditioned for stuff I'm gonna be doing later this year. I want to make an arbor here. That was my original plan. I didn't want to do it on Big Dreams because I knew I wanted to take my time and enjoy it. So I wanted to have an arbor, which you sit in, it's a bit like a bus stop. <laughs> Made of um, some hazel. I've got hazel on my allotment. Hazel and a pitched roof. So I'm still thinking about that. But having watched the program again, 
maybe something a bit more substantial and maybe with a bit more storage. Now we've got this arch, we're going to have somewhere to put the tools. Otherwise we're going to have a bike lock up at the top. But that's, that's this year's project. Along with sorting out this pond, because we've still got liners and things showing. You might not have seen it very well on the show, but I mean, it's our first pond and we didn't know much about what to do with it. So there might be a bit of remodeling here. In this pond are little secret stones, little secret stones I've picked up, which don't belong together. So this one, you can see that, is a fossil which I found on the allotment and I've got oh, dotted around bits of volcano from various places in the world, bits of granite from other places in the world. So it's got a story of rocks in here that shouldn't be here, but they remind me of holidays. I really like this. I know it's not lush. I know it's not as green as it's, it perhaps should be. It's something we talked about, in fact, right here. But it's going to get there, and I'm, I, I love the journey. Let's talk chamomile. Let's talk chamomile. Oh, right, mm, crikey, it's just going. I've got my counter up here, half an hour. I don't like. I like cutting grass. I used to cut grass as a kid. In fact, for work experience, because I went to Catholic school, we did um, gardening, myself and the Taggart brothers at the bishop's house and we had to mow his lawn every Thursday. It gets boring. It's, it's all right, it's therapeutic, but I didn't want to do it in my garden. I didn't want the lawn to mow, especially if we got a mound. So I opted for chamomile. I don't know what prompted it. I think partly it was the tea plantations you get in Japan. And you see those when you're on the bullet train, you can see these rolling hills. So I wanted something that was a bit different from grass, something that didn't need mowing, like this doesn't. So I ordered, turned out to be just over 1,600 plants. And they all came in plugs. And so we did plug, 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 plug. So I had lots of, lots of help doing that. If we were to do it again, I don't know if I'd do it again, but I'd certainly dig in a lot more sand. This isn't particularly good soil drainage here. So it did start to rot a bit. But it looks all right. And Monty says he's never seen chamomile used this way, so it's nice to do something that no one's done before. You know, I think that's almost the story of the garden so far. I mean, there are lots of stories within here and lots of history of some of these plants and things. Um, stuff I've left out, like um, hollies, there's no mahonias in here because I used to get prickled a lot when I was cutting my mum's holly back. There aren't any huge big bassetti bamboos because, I mean, this has got a, a barrier around the bottom, a very expensive barrier, it's about 60, 80 quid's worth of very thick bamboo barrier down the bottom, so it becomes prohibitively expensive and also takes some time to grow. I do have some giant bamboo, which I grew from seed, and it's very tricky to grow from seed because I've been trying for about eight years, which is just down here in the corner, growing away. So there might be some more bamboo to come. But I love the garden and I love making it. And it was great to have Jake doing it because he was allergic to mud. The, the first, first day with Monty, he was out here in his brand new wellies. He went back inside and washed his wellies in the sink. Second time he didn't do it, so it was fine. He was huffing and cursing at some points um, particularly shoving, shoveling gravel. I was talking on the program, we've got eight tons of gravel under here, and actually we have 31 tons of soil on top. We've also got a load of gravel and hardcore under here, and block work, grey breeze blocks under here to, to level off this, plant, uh, this path and make it stable. We had um, our friend Danny do that, who's um, incredible. And then we had to you know, ram it down, this whole story is behind all this. If it's a lot of hard work, but it's all, it's all worth it. And it was the first chapter. It's an incredible thing we did it in a couple of months, three and a bit months. 
and there's more to come. And thank you very much for this um, long and slightly rambling trip around the garden and I hope you like it. If you've got questions about plant costs, kind of what we've put where, because you know, there is some method into the madness, right plant for the right place, it's very important, that's what Monty says. Uh, except for the maple, that's a woodland plant, but it's doing all right out in the sun. Uh, where we sighted stuff, how we went about painting this, sighting these, do just ask in the comments, that's fine. Um, and thank you very much for your interest. And to my fellow big dreamers, hello. I know how hard it is now, but the rewards are worth it. Thank you to Monty and thank you to Lion TV especially and the BBC let's have um, a catch up in a few years eh see how how our gardens grow see you next time